Hi everyone, it's Lauren and these are the reviews for all of the books that I read in the month of February. The first two that I have to show you today I read because of some series that I'm doing on my channel, love a good series me. And um, the first of these is Othello by William Shakespeare which I read unsurprisingly for my Shakespeare um, series. You can watch my video that I did on Othello up here and also in the description box below. There's not much I have to say about this play because I um, read it when I was 15 or 16 I think for my English Literature GCSE and I remember really enjoying it at the time because I think it's one of the more accessible Shakespeare plays really and I've not read it or seen an adaptation of it since then so it's just quite nice to revisit it. Um, I do really enjoy Othello as a plot so um, yeah I would recommend this as if you're new to Shakespeare it's quite a good one to read um, but also I would mostly recommend you watch my video on it and it'll tell you more things. <laughs> plug plug. And then the next book that I read was Peter Pan by J.M. Barry, and I really enjoyed reading this. I mean like who wouldn't enjoy reading Peter Pan and this is going to be the next book that I do a page to screen episode on so in page to screen what I do is read a classic book and then watch all of the different film and movie adaptations of it so I'm really looking forward to watching all the different um, Peter Pan adaptations or interpretations that there have been. I've never read the original Peter Pan. Um, original is putting it quite loosely because it was a play first and Peter Pan as a character appears in lots of other of J.M. Barry's writing but I think I had an abridged like Ladybird book or something. I had like an abridged Peter Pan book when I was little which I read but it definitely wasn't J.M. Barry's writing as such. So I found this quite an interesting experience. Unsurprisingly, this is a lot darker than the Disneyfied story that um, most of us are used to. But one of the things I found most interesting about this book is J.M. Barry's views on children or children's personality traits. And there's a lot of themes in here of children being very selfish, heartless and cruel. Um, Peter Pan is an obvious example because he is very arrogant, very cocky. He forgets everybody's names. He just does an adventure and then forgets what he's done. And he just doesn't really care for anybody in the world but the darling children are equally as bad in that they are very happy to forget their own parents and go off for, for months on end um, but they are safe in the knowledge that their parents won't forget them and that window will always be open for them to fly back into and in fact they expect their parents to just be fine and um, to remember them when they come home and I quite enjoyed this aspect of the book because I think that's quite a true observation in terms of children's character traits or their perception of their place in the world and their absolute belief that someone should be there to love them. I really enjoyed reading it, obviously I enjoyed reading it, and I'm looking forward to doing my page to screen episode on it. The next book I read was a little bit of an interesting one for me, a departure from my normal uh, genres that I read and it was a sci-fi book and I don't think I've ever read a book which specifically identifies as sci-fi but you know I think we're all a bit guilty of just going to what we know we're going to like and what we're used to so I thought I would branch out a little bit and this is Ancillary Justice by Anne Leckie and I got this book ages ago because I've heard so many good things about it on booktube and I thought yeah give it a go. This book is about a spaceship called the Justice of Torrin and what happens in this universe is that ships have AIs but they also have legions of I suppose dead soldiers which they can like inhabit or possess that their intelligence goes into them and so they have eyes and ears on the ground um, wherever their troops are going and um, I, I found that a very interesting concept and I liked it because I remember when I heard about this book and it being about a spaceship I was like well like, how's it gonna be about a spaceship though like <laughs> how does a spaceship n like interact with humans and this kind of makes a lot more sense now that I've read it. I'll be honest that the first half of the book I did quite struggle with, not because I didn't want to read it, but because the world building was just quite complex and there's lots of different groups of people and um, they've got funny names and like different languages and it's trying to piece everything together. And I did find it really hard to follow, especially because it's, I think it's a very hard thing to try and explain what the ship is because the kind of the ship is narrating the book to you and the ship never goes well I am a ship and I can do this with these people like it just kind of chucks you in there so you have to piece together what's going on and honestly I, I did find it difficult and I hate to be one of those people who says well you have to read the first half of the book before you start enjoying it because I don't think that's fair but actually the second half of the book I did really get into it and this is a trilogy so I think with books that have the first part of a trilogy they can be a little bit slower because it's just a longer story really um and yeah by the end of it i was really on board <laughs> on board like the ship because it's funny so i did really enjoy it by the end i don't know that i'm i feel the absolute urge to read books two and three um so i might just leave it there but 
this it was kind of good I feel for me to dip my toes into a different genre um, I definitely want to expand my reading and yeah I, I enjoyed it I might continue with the series um, in the future but we'll see the next book we have today was a bit of a disappointment and I actually didn't finish it, I'm afraid, and that was Swing Time by Zadie Smith. Now this is 450 pages long, I did read 300 of those pages, so I feel like I gave it a really good shot. I just got to a point with it where I was like, I've got the gist and I do not want to read this anymore, so I just put it down. Now that sounds like it's awful, it's not awful. Let me explain. This is told from the perspective of an unnamed uh, female narrator who was born um, in North London and most of the book is about her relationship with her friend Tracy um, who she used to go to dance class with and it's about them going from children into adulthood, their relationship with each other and then Tracy pursues dance and our narrator doesn't. We also have sections which are in the modern day where our narrator is an adult and she's working for this pop star who's trying to build a school in Africa and she's like her assistant and um, it's about lots of things. It's about race, both the narrator and Tracy are mixed race um, in London in, in a predominantly white area um, and it obviously with the pop star, like the white saviour going to Africa, like kind of, there's lots of stuff going on in this book. I almost feel like it should have been two or three books because honestly I really enjoyed the sections with her and Tracy and their relationships. I think what Zadie Smith does really well, because I enjoyed this in NW as well when I read it, is the change in relationships between being a child and getting on with someone and then going through those teenage years into adulthood and the coming together and growing apart and the difficulties that come with that. I loved that bit, thought it was really interesting. Generally, I felt the rest of the book was unnecessary or it wasn't necessary for it to be one book. And it is quite a slow read. So I just got to a point where I was like, I'm actually quite bored of this. So I put it down, which is a shame because it's not terribly written. It just, it's very long and wasn't for me. The next book I read was sent to be very kindly from Granta and that is First Love by Gwendolyn Riley. And I read this as a buddy read with Lauren from Lauren and the Books. And I think we were both a bit bemused by this, to be honest, because I feel like this is marketed as a love story or even like a love story sort of which is quite fraught or it has difficulties but ultimately it's about love I feel like this is about I mean I don't know I didn't feel like it was about love <laughs> but in that way this story follows Neve who is married to an older man called Edwin and she's looking back on their relationship on their marriage on the turbulences they've had to go through but it's also her relationship with her mother with her father a fling with somebody she had um, back at university I think so it's just about her relationships with everybody in her world, I suppose, but all of the other characters, apart from Neve, suspiciously, are horrific. Like they're all caricaturedly awful and like really extreme, um, but not to the extent that I didn't want to stop reading. I found them, I found it very engaging and all of the characters were very funny. And although it's a very, very short book, it felt like you were seeing snapshots of fully realized um, personalities, which I thought was very good, very well done. But it's just, I didn't really know what to think of it. I didn't really know, what she was saying by the end of the book. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I'm just quite like, oh, ooh, <laughs> what was this about? There's things in here about marriage and relationships and a woman's place, but specifically like a woman's place within a relationship and what her expectations should be and how we view ourselves compared to how we reach out to others. I mean, there's just, there's so much in here. Um, I'm very impressed that she filled it all in. Um, I didn't come away from it thinking that was my favourite book ever, but it has really stayed with me and it's definitely made an impression on me. Um, so yeah, I would I would recommend giving it a go, definitely. And I certainly want to look into a little bit more of Gwendolyn Riley's writing because it's just quite an interesting style. Um, and I've not really read anything like this before, I don't think. And finally, I did finish February off with a bang, thankfully, and read something I absolutely loved, which was My Name is Leon by Kit to Wall. And this was fantastic. I'd seen this going around other people's channels and people gushing about it. I'm so glad I read it. This is a proof copy. So the, it, this isn't exactly what the cover looks like. It's quite similar to this though. Um, I just, I just loved it. It was such a quick, easy read. I, I would just really recommend it. If you don't watch the rest of this video, just I recommend reading this. This is the story of Leon and his brother Jake. Um, Leon's eight years old and mixed race. His brother Jake is a baby and he's white. And when they get taken into care, Jake gets adopted and Leon doesn't. And it's just so heartbreaking, but not in a really sensationalist way, in a really normal, everyday way. What Kit DeWall does fantastically is right from the perspective of a child. This is told in third person, it's not from Leon's point of view per se, but the way his views on the world are described and his simplistic view and his emotions, his inability to deal with his anger, um, 
I just think it's handled so brilliantly and it made me, it really resonated with me. It made me remember what I felt like when I was eight or nine years old. Weirdly, it's something I would recommend people take on holiday. It felt like a holiday read because I was just so immersed in the story even though it's not about very nice, it's not about very nice subjects, um, and it is quite sad, but it just, I couldn't put it down. I couldn't stop reading it. It's not that long, I suppose, but I think I read it in about a day and a half or two days. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. I really recommend it. Just, just read it, just read it, read it. So yeah, pretty mixed bag for me, I think, in terms of what I read last month. I would love to hear from you if you've read any of these books. I always enjoy um, discussing perhaps the finer plot points with you in the comments below, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.